I always found it to be really odd and weird looking on a desk to have a monitor slanted like this or like this. Let me give you a better view. All right, here you go. Laptop or desktop, vertical monitor. How weird is that? For me, it's very weird, but after using it like this for the last month, I'm seeing the light. I'm gonna explore that with you, give you why I think this is a better option. I'm also gonna offer two slightly better options than what I have here. When you hover over one of these green buttons in the windows, you get a move to build in retina display option so if you have multiple monitors you can just move your window and it's not too jarring because they're the same size well at least in my scaling that I'm using so if I go here and I say move to LG boom there it is and it's the same size so it's a really easy way to manage windows what do you do when you're looking at windows whether you're looking at code whether you're looking at websites you're scrolling vertically most of the time i'm talking about coding and normal use for software developers you're going to view more lines of code without scrolling which improves readability and context understanding kind of mirrors the natural flow of programming language which are written line by line here's some code and i'm looking at a file called package.json something you don't usually look at but this is a good example so again i'm going to go here and I'm going to move to that other screen and there it goes bam and I have this extra area to work with if I want to but I wanted to show you this if I go to enter full screen mode just the default click now that right there is such a nice use of a vertical monitor when you have a code file that's long this offers an incredible way to view your code not only that but also your files here if you have a large file tree that expands look at that there's my node modules folder it's so much easier to find things this way example two well that would be <laughs> any kind of file manager right so finder in on a mac same thing you got a bunch of things to scroll through you just expand it much easier to drag and drop things this way portrait orientation is ideal for reading or editing long documents you are documenting your code right and you're reading documentation that's what i thought by the way if you just double click it just expands it to fill the screen without having that application be in full screen and of course websites and reading materials on the web are all designed for vertical scrolling there's my email i can see more of it YouTube. I don't need to see this horizontally on a 16 by 9, 27 inch display. This is perfect. Theater mode. I still see all the comments. I see a lot of other videos here. And who doesn't like YouTube? Stack overflow. We all still use it. Admit it. You use it. I still use it. Here you get to see everybody's mean comments all together in one shot without having to scroll. And another benefit, when I'm using my laptop on my desk like this, I'm looking down at it. And that's fine as long as it's not prolonged. And it is usually, unfortunately, prolonged. But this, when I set this up, the initial shock of looking up and straight across, it was something I wasn't really used to. But now that I'm used to it, this feels a lot more natural, looking straight at my screen instead of down. And it's actually better for your neck long term. Now, of course, if you have your monitors on arms like I do, you can position it higher, even if it's landscape or vertical. But with a landscape, if you position it higher, let's do that for a second here. So here I put it in landscape mode at eye level. If you position higher, it's weird because you have to jump up and down between your main screen and here. And also dragging windows back and forth becomes really unnatural because there is no shared border between these two. Maybe it's me. I don't know. But I like to have a shared border and not a corner connection connection between my dual screens. That way dragging windows is more natural and I don't have to find that weird spot where I would drag something over. So when my monitor is in portrait mode, there is a natural border between my main screen and the extra monitor, which allows me to easily find where I can drag windows back and forth. Now there's a couple of ways that you can improve what I have here with my setup. And right now I'm only using one vertical monitor. This one is here for symmetry. I'm just kidding. It's I use it sometimes when I'm doing some tests, but but most of the time I'm happy with just one vertical monitor at this point. The thing is, it's a little bit too tall now. So we've got 14 inches for this MacBook Pro and vertically it's about nine inches visible. Here we've got about 13 and a half inches and 24, 24 inches tall. It's a little bit too tall. You see the space in the middle? It's usable space. And I could make these windows a little bit bigger, each one, or I can make them smaller so I could fit three windows in there. But ideally, this would not be as tall, so I don't have to look as high. It would be just maybe five inches shorter. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, what would be, I think, ideal. So I'm sitting here, and if I'm looking at this, this would be the highest I'd want to view my windows. And that would also give me about two of these windows in the vertical monitor. So this is a 
27 inch display. If this was five inches shorter or about there, it'd probably be a 24 inch display. So I reached out to BenQ to see if they can loan me a 24 inch monitor. And they did one specifically for programmers. I'll show you that in a moment. But before I do, if you have two external monitors, the best orientation would probably be this. One, the portrait orientation that we talked about, and then one landscape. So if you have a horizontal and a vertical setup, in this kind of arrangement, you can really enhance your productivity by dedicating the vertical space for specific tasks like coding or document review or web scrolling while using the horizontal monitor for others like email or design work. And it's fine for the landscape to be as landscapey as possible. In other words, a 27 inch in 16 by nine ratio is fine because on that screen, you can put things that are video tutorials you can fit more horizontal oriented things. Like if you have really long class names in your code. Yes, Java developers, I'm looking at you. And somehow it's spilling over to TypeScript these days. So this would be my monitor arrangement like this. The middle one is my MacBook Pro screen, 27 inch screen here, horizontally. Landscape 27 inch on this side, vertical 27 inch on this side, ideally 24 inch vertical on this side too. The monitor arrived, here it is. But one thing I didn't anticipate was that this is going to be the ultimate coding productivity monitor. This is the 24 inch BenQ RD240Q, which is made for programmers. The height is perfect on it. It had me a little worried because this thing is a thick monitor. And I was a little excited because I saw that this monitor had smaller bezels, at least externally, it looked like it did. And it does, but it also has internal bezels, which is a bummer, especially because this part right here is so thick as well. But external aesthetics aside, how is the monitor for the intended task programming. Well, it's an IPS panel. IPS stands for in panel switching, I think. I don't know what that means, but I know that IPS panels are good for color reproduction. And if I look at it from pretty much any angle, it still looks decent. The Apple Studio displays an IPS panel and so is their XDR display. And also this panel has 60 Hertz refresh rate, not a lot. I kind of was hoping for a little more. Based on the intended purpose of this thing, 60 Hertz is fine for development. I I wanted more than 60 because of my recent video that I did. I'll pin it up here somewhere and also down below where I tested out a MacBook Air, which is 60 Hertz internally with 144 Hertz display. And I did notice a big difference there, even dragging windows around, navigating and things like that. I already had two 60 Hertz displays, so I kind of was hoping for more than that. But as far as looking at code, what's not very Apple-like here is that I see some pixelation going on. Let me show you. Let's take a look at the built-in display. Look at that apple right there. Look how nice and crisp it is. I'm gonna freeze frame that for a moment so you can really take a look at that. And now we're gonna go to the new monitor and the little apple there. All right, freeze frame. And you can definitely see the pixelation here. Anyway, I can see it even around the word Chrome there. You can see the pixelation. Not as crisp and clean and smooth output as from the built-in display. And my ultra fine LG display also has slightly better rendering of text. That's not to say that this is a bad monitor. The colors on it are actually incredibly well rendered. I have zero complaints about the colors. It is not as bright as this display gets. This is full brightness for the built-in MacBook Pro display, and this is full brightness for the BenQ. Now what's interesting about this one is it has color modes and it's got coding presets, dark theme, light theme. <laughs> I can see that being good for light theme right there. M book, whatever that means, cinema, e-paper, and then a custom one. So yeah, a bunch of different presets. The coding ones are pretty interesting. Thing. As for the code itself, well, that looks perfectly fine as you'd imagine. The color is there. I still do see a little bit of pixelation. Doesn't really bother me that much, but it is better on the built-in display. But what isn't? I'm gonna try this out for a week. If you want me to do a longer form review of the monitor, a dedicated review, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe a comparison between the other monitors that I have. But as far as positioning my monitor here like this, I think I'm gonna run with this for at least a little while and see how this works out for me. I have a good feeling about this, especially because look, the top of my head comes right to the top of the monitor. So my eyes are right over here around line 20 in the code base, which means I'm not straining myself too much to look high and I can look down and most of my code is going to be right in the center of my vision with a good neck position. I'm happy about that. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you all in the next one.